Well, hello. <laughs> Hi, friends. Hello. <sighs> we made it. We made it. We made it. Okay. A couple little weird techie things, but we made it. Hello. Hi. This is Lisa Hetrick. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. Today, I have a fun tutorial. We're going to totally nerd out on some watercolor. We're going to do some watercolors. We're going to do some stamping. We're not going to make a card. I literally changed the project idea about 10 minutes before we were going live. I kind of was going to go one way and I shifted it and thought, hey, we haven't nerded out about watercolor. Well, that's not true. We nerd out pretty much every week about watercolor, but it's all, it's going to be about watercolor today. We're going to talk about greens. We're getting into the fall, although I don't know where you are, but this morning it was 28 degrees. It was really chilly. I see people popping in. Donna, Dawn, Rhonda, Judith. Hello, Donna. That's such a very, very sweet comment. She shared if she's enjoyed my products and has never been disappointed. Thank you so much. Ah, Dawn shared. <laughs> Good morning, Lisa and all the wannabe watercolor artists. That's why we're here. On this channel, I share paper crafting and watercolor tutorials. And I would like to be your go-to resource for learning all things about watercolor. And um, that's what we're going to do today. So super fun. Hello, Wendy. Oh, hello, hello. You know what? You have to check out Wendy's cards that she, she just used my Morning Glory stamp and did some watercoloring and made a really, really bunch of cards on her Instagram and she used gold embossing powder and they're absolutely gorgeous. You have to go check them out. Check out Wendy. Wendy, drop your Instagram handle in the comments so everybody can go check you out because I saw that this morning and it was pretty cool. Okay. Chili in Northern Indiana. Hello. Hello. Okay. All right, friends, we're going to get started. Again, I'm Lisa Hetrick. All of you know that. Welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. I did not, I kind of had an idea in my head of what we were going to do, and it was based on that funky pumpkin Gordy um, that I had shared in my social media this week, but I changed my mind on the card making process 10 minutes before we were going to go live. So let's go ahead down to the down camera. Hello, we're down here. Okay, so here is the inspiration for the project, we are going to, oh, thank you, Wendy. Oh, you're so sweet. Make sure you drop that handle in there so everybody can go check out your cards. Okay, we're using the Grace and Gratitude stamp set today. And this is my latest release with Gina K. I I wasn't quite ready, friends. Let me just put my face in here. Uh, let's see if I can get that to work. Let's see. Okay, I guess we're not going to behave. Um today. You know what? You just never know what's going to happen. So my face is not going to pop in. So let me just pop back to the to the front camera. Um, I wasn't quite ready to start the holiday series that I've been talking about. And I'm thinking maybe next week or the week after, but I'd like that holiday series to kind of go through the Thanksgiving time and into the very beginning of December. It is just November 2nd. And I know that there's holiday stuff everywhere. But I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different today. So we're going to still work with grace and gratitude. Uh, yeah, Dawn, technology is awesome. It literally all just worked. Like I have all these different buttons and different things for, for bringing um, overlays and oh, just all the things. And then all of a sudden, just, you know, it is what it is. So Here's the inspiration for today's card. And it gave me a really great opportunity to talk and nerd out a little bit more about watercolor mixing and kind of getting some of these really super, super fall colors. And we're going to play with the gourd. And this time, today, what we're going to do is a couple, I don't know, maybe I did this a while ago. God, just, this might have been in the spring. And we talked about um, we talked about me uh, taking stamps and creating a painting with them. When, and I did that with this. And this is like a five by seven that goes in this little three and a half by five frame uh, mat. 
and um, goes in a five by seven. And we had made this, and after the live, I'll link up that video to make this and the stamps that were used for this. But I thought, oh my gosh, this would be perfect to do, take our stamps and kind of make a painting. Um, Wendy, what I meant is in the comments, put your Instagram handle so everybody can go find you. Um, yeah, I love that flower too, Donna. Okay, so today we are going to get into some nerdy watercolor first before we start the painting and the composition. But that's what we're going to do. I'm kind of mashing up a little bit of our paper crafting and our um, painting today. And that's what we're going to do. I am using, now the supplies aren't listed down below in the description because I literally changed a bunch of things a couple minutes beforehand. So I am... Um, I'll get them in, but I am using the Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. That's what I'm using today. This is what I always use, and I recognize everyone's name today, and you've all been around, so you know what kind of watercolor paper I use often. So that's what we're using today, and today we're going to nerd out a little bit. I'm going to talk about greens and the colors that we're going to be using, and then we're going to do the composition. So let's start off with the nerding out, and let's start off with some of the watercolors that I'm going to talk about. Okay, I grabbed some water. First of all, these are little, um, little porcelain, they call them tapas plates, but they make the perfect little porcelain plate. I put these little felt pads on the bottom so it doesn't scratch the glass. They make these perfect little trays or these little porcelain plates for a little bit of watercolor. Yeah, that's another little... Uh, porcelain plates is another story for another day. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about some of these greens. Now, the genesis of this, I'm going to come back to the to the overhead, to the, uh, to the front cam. The genesis of me being a little bit obsessed with these greens is I have been doing a little bit of a clean out of the office and I was going through paints that have dried out and that haven't dried out and things like that. And I found a palette. Yay! Donna said she loves it when I teach one, one, watercolor 101. I found a palette that had a bunch of greens in it and I didn't have it identified what I was using, but I knew what painting I did it and I used it for. And I said, well, I'm gonna, then I squirreled and decided I was going to go get a cup, figure out what these paints were. And I knew flat out my favorite paint, my favorite green, one of my favorite greens is Cascade Green. Let's just go in. We're going to talk a little bit about some of these colors and a little, we're going to paint with them. I'm going to do a little swatch. <coughs> Excuse me. Take a quick sip going to do a little bit of a swatch. So we're, we're doing a little bit of a lesson and yes, there will be a project, but I kind of wanted to focus on some of these greens and some of these really neat properties of these greens. So this is Cascade Green from Daniel Smith. Love this color. And one of the things that I love about this color is what it does and the colors that it turns into, like when it dries and what it does. So it granulates. So Cascade Green, then I pulled some Da Vinci. This is Da Vinci Joyce's Mother Green. Love this. This is a mix of greens, and I'm going to swatch these out and talk about them individually. This had these. This is a mix that was done by Da Vinci, working with that artist Joyce. Um, I, I've forgotten her last name. I'll come back to it. Um, da Vinci Green Gold. Love this color. I've got Da Vinci Sea Glass. This is going to be like our blue that I'm playing with. And Da Vinci Yellow. Okay. Now, I have swatched all these out, and I'm going to swatch them all out again. And we're going to talk about them and talk about some of the different properties. Now, I also want to do, I also try to share like different watercolor brands and different properties of different watercolors so that when you're purchasing them and you're looking to expand your collection, you kind of get a little bit of a sense of what's out there. I also wanted to share, I usually will match these colors up with some colors that are in the Gina K line for your stamping inks. So a lot of the greens that I'm using today will fall right in line 
with the colors from light spruce, medium spruce, and dark spruce from the Gina K line. I love these three colors. We used these last week, so I'm just kind of doing a little bit of a continuation of talking about greens and yellows that we did last week. Um, oh, I needed to cut that. Ah, but I wanted to do watercolor. So we're doing watercolor today, friends. We're just doing it. Okay, let's talk about Cascade Green. I've got some water here and I've got a round brush. Cascade Green is right here. And you can see in the, in the porcelain well here, that color, Cascade Green from Daniel Smith is a super unique color. I've been obsessed with it for years. It is a two pigment color. So it has PBR7 and PB15 in it. Here's the nerd out part, friends. If you don't like this part, I'm so sorry, but I just, um, I kind of wanted to talk about why these colors do some of the things that they do. This is a granulating color. It has brown iron oxide and phthalo blue in it. So when the two mix together, they make the most beautiful green that when it dries and it separates, you end up getting some of those turquoise blues from the phthalo blue separating. You can start to see how that's happening here. And it is one of the most delightful colors when it dries. Just love it. Oh, we're gonna use that today because you get the benefit of that phthalo blue that's in the color and you get the brown iron oxide mixing with the phthalo blue. So you get this like dirty, greenish, bluish color, super gorgeous. It's one of my favorite colors in their line. I love Daniel Smith watercolors. I tend to, I tend to lean towards um, grabbing Da Vinci or grabbing some other colors because they're sitting right on my desk. But when I get the Daniel Smith colors out, I just love playing with them. Okay, Da Vinci Mother's Green. Now this green is, I kind of call this like a dark green in the borderline olive. I call it, it's kind of like, I want to say dirty green too, because it's got like, it's got three pigments in it. We're totally nerding out with the pigment chatter today. It's got three pigments in it. It's got yellow iron oxide, phthalo green, and brown iron oxide. So brown iron oxide is in the Cascade Green. It's also in this color too. And it's PG7, PY42, and PBR7. And it just makes this really beautiful green. Oh, I love it. Okay. We're going to use all of them today. And then my next green right here is Da Vinci Green Gold. Now you'll find green gold. You won't find Joyce's Mother Green in other brands, but you can definitely mix those three pigments to achieve that. Um, Cascade Green is kind of a, it's a Da Vinci color. I mean, a, a Daniel Smith color but you could definitely mix it and get that color. Now the green gold is very common. You'll see that in other brands. It is also called like Ozo green um, because that's what's in it. It's um, PY129, which is copper azomethene green. Copper Ozo green. Love that color. Oh my gosh, it's so Okay, my next color is Da Vinci Sea Glass. I love sea glass. Oh, so this is a turquoise leaning color. Oh, I love it. We're gonna be using this for our, our background this today. And maybe some other things. But it's got phthalo blue and copper phthalo blue, uh, th copper phthalo blue and phthalo green. So it's PB154 and PG7, and it is beautiful, beautiful color. All right, and then my yellow that I'm going to use, Da Vinci Yellow. This is a Benzamita Yellow, PY154. And the reason why it shows this yellow is because it's a little on the warmer side. 
so a little warmer. So like a lemon yellow would be a little cooler. And this one is a little bit warmer. Oh my goodness, I love these colors. I am loving these colors. The sea glass is gorgeous. And that was a newer release. Here's the sea glass. It was a newer release with Da Vinci. I think I picked it up this past spring. Um, I really, really love it. But look at that color palette. So I would say like our light spruce and our medium spruce with Gina K. Um, light spruce is kind of borderline cascade green. Medium spruce too. And our dark spruce is somewhere in between this color and a little darker. But we'll play with those. Okay. All right, we're going to get to it. We're going to get to the composition. So this was like a super nerd out, like get familiar with some greens and gets familiar with some a little bit of the yellows and blues from these two brands. And that's Daniel Smith and Da Vinci. Um, love, just love, 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 love. Okay. Let's just move this to the side. When this dries, I want to show you what happens. You can kind of see what's happening here. There's granulation happening. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it becomes like this beautiful, beautiful turquoise. You can see these like little specks happening in this cascade green. And then you get the, that blue, that phthalo blue is separating from the brown iron oxide. And you're getting that turquoise look happening. Oh, I just love it. Okay. All right, let's dive in. Let's dive in. I'm going to bring in my piece of watercolor paper. And I'm going to st I am going to tape this down, I think. We'll see what happens. Let's tape this down and we're going to build a composition with the gourd. I don't usually tape stuff down, but I'm going to try it. Let's see if I can control myself. Not want to flip it around a little bit. I know that this piece, that's a little bit crooked. Let's do this again. I know that this piece is going to go in to this frame. So I kind of have little tick marks right here. Just kind of telling me where my space is, where my visual space is going to be with the mat. I know that I'll probably go out on this outer edge a little bit, just so that we get some really interesting design. But we're gonna talk through using our stamps to create a painting. And also I'm gonna teach you some other brush strokes to add to that stamped image to kind of give it your own little spin. And this is how I, this is what I'm thinking of when I design stamps. When I design a stamp set and all the stamps in my collection, in my brain when I'm designing them, I'm thinking about, hey, what would this look like if this is painted? What will this look like if we create this uh, in a card format? Um, how can we translate our card ideas into maybe a painting or a giftable item. So those are the kinds of things that run through my head when I'm illustrating the stamps. And um, yeah, it happens. It's wild. So what we're going to do is I kind of want to make this, I want to make this, I'm going to start laughing. I want to make this painting sort of like what it's like to be in a pumpkin patch, but with this funky pumpkin gordy that even Charlie Brown would just love to sit in this little pumpkin patch. And I know I just dated myself with the great pumpkin, Charlie Brown, but you know what? Hey, I think that many of you will identify with it. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna use my light spruce and I'm going to ink up this stamp very, very gently because I'm essentially doing like a no line watercoloring, but I'm not using amalgam. I've got my, if I think about my space here in thirds, I've got my top third, my middle third, my bottom third. I kind of want to come up and in a little bit here with my funky pumpkin gordy. And I'm just stamping it down very, very lightly. I don't want that image to, um, <laughs> Dawn says she loves Charlie Brown. I don't care that that image is not solid because I'm just going to go in with a little bit of a wet brush, 
Donna, I watch it every year too, and I'm just going to uh, soften those edges. Just to soften the edges, and I'm only using these edges here of this to help me with my frame. Just help me frame in my little Gordy here so that I know what I got going here. So I can see what I've got painting. These lines are just going to eventually dissolve into the greens and the yellows and the blues that we're going to paint this funky punk and Gordy. Okay. Now, I'd like you to drop in the chat how many of you have ever used your stamps as a framework to create a painting or done this no line watercoloring? Because if you haven't, I'm hoping that this tutorial will inspire you. I've got a little paper towel over here. Um, so let's just dive in. Now we're going to focus on first doing a wet into wet technique. I'm probably going to do about three layers of watercolor to kind of bring up that luminosity from the ground up. So lighter colors, lighter washes of color first, then we're going to add another layer we're going to dry them in between, and when this whole thing is done, it's going to look like a painting. And uh, yeah, we're going to put it in a little frame. Yeah, we're, that's what we're going to do. All right, I've got a, my brush I have here is a number six round. It's a Princeton Heritage brush, and honestly, this brush, I've been digging this Heritage, Princeton Heritage line been working with it. I've just left it sitting on my work table so that when I go to paint, I'm grabbing it first so I can really just kind of test them out. Now my brush is wet, my paper is dry now, and I'm going to come in and just start to add some water to one of the slices of the little Gordy. And I'm going to drop in some watercolor. I'm going to start with the Cascade Green, and I'm going to drop a little bit of Cascade Green in and watch it go. Holy smokes, watch it go. I love the Daniel Smith line for that reason. It is a runner. It will just find the water and it will go to it. I don't have to do a lot of coaxing with it. Dawn just shared, a, she stamped a big sunflower. Perfect. She just stamped a big sunflower, so this tutorial is going to be perfect for her. Excellent. Perfect. Sunflower, it's a great time to do sunflowers too. All right, I'm just kind of coaxing what I've got here, that cascade green. You can see some of that blue coming out. Digging that. I'm going to take a little bit of this green gold. Let's bring my colors in. Take a little bit of this green gold and just drop it in the bottom. So I'm coming from top down with some of the cascade green. And now I am coming from the bottom with a little bit of this green gold. I'm going to let the watercolor, I'm going to let the water and the watercolor do its thing. And you can start to see right now that that line is disappearing. It's disappearing. So with the wet into wet technique, which is one of my favorite techniques, it's super washy. Everything is still wet. I don't have to do a lot of coaxing with the water. I'm going to let these two be friends down here and see how they blend together. Got a nice light wash, still a little bit wet up here. I'm going to grab a little bit of that cascade green and drop a little bit more in the top. Oh my gosh, I'm loving this. Now, this is one of the easiest ways, friends, for you to get started in watercolor. It is one of the easiest ways, this wet into wet technique. It's super, super easy. We're just dropping water in. We're wetting our paper and dropping water in, especially with a big stamped image like this that's got it's wide open spaces. Try this washy watercolor wet into wet. Paper's wet, brush is wet, loading up that pigment and dropping it in. All right, I'm going to let this dry. Let it do its thing. I'm going to come over here to this outer slice. Also, you could, the number six round is pretty small, but if you felt like you wanted to get into some, you could go smaller with a two or a four um, if you really feel like you want to be more detailed. But remember, we're doing washy watercolor. So 
and that tip is on the round is very, very fine, so you'll be fine. All right, we're going to go to this outer slice, and we're going to repeat our same colors here. Hello, Kathy. Kathy just popped in. No worries. Nobody's late. You're not late. You're just getting started. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just painting in some water. Wet into wet. Now, this paper, the Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor, is pretty thirsty paper. It's 100% cotton. It's not as a thirsty as like an Arches paper or some of the other papers that I've used that are maybe just a little bit more expensive, but I love using this paper for paper crafting projects. All right, I'm gonna come in with some of the Cascade Green, just drop it in the top and then watch it do its thing. It's just like my favorite thing ever. Just keep dropping, keep dropping some in the top and let it do its thing. And so this, this makes, this technique makes it super easy for you to get started in watercolor using your stamps, using some paints that you have, and starting with these really simple techniques, you're going to achieve, you're going to achieve a lot of success, like right out of the gate. So one of the things I hear from people, and one of the things I get in um, a lot of emails or direct messages from everyone is, um, I, you know, they feel like watercolor is kind of like one of those rogue mediums. It kind of does its own thing. Well, remember, watercolor only goes, watercolor only goes where the water is. So this technique is so super simple, washy, wet into wet, the brush is wet, the paper is wet, we're dropping our pigment in and we're letting them be friends to do their thing. So super, super simple. I can't stress that enough how much fun that is. Okay, got a question from Donna. Lisa, with watercolor, is it better to let it air dry or dry with a heat gun? Donna, great question. If you have the time, if you have the time, um, you can let it air dry depending upon your paper that you're using and how thirsty it is. Thirstier papers like Arsh's, papers that tend to be a little bit more expensive, take a, you know take in so much water really quickly and disperse that water through the fibers so they tend to dry maybe a little bit faster. This paper is 100% cotton, but it doesn't dry as fast. Now, to, um, to answer your question, you can let, it's not better or worse. We're going to use a heat tool because we're, you know, we're trying to get this done in an hour and we're probably going to go over, but I want to dry in between layers and I want to keep moving. So if you want to keep moving with your project, because this is your time, just get out your heat tool and dry, dry it, just zap it. And then you can go in with your second layer, dry that in between, and then go in with your third layer. And that's what we're going to do here. But if you have the time, let it dry in between, go do something else and come back, you'll be good to go. So either way works, it doesn't change your final outcome. Okay. Okay, so, and you can see I've got like, things are starting to dry up here. Let's see if we can pull in a little bit tighter. Okay, things are starting to dry up here. So I'm going to come back here. This is still a little bit wet over here. I'm going to zap this because I... I'm going to zap this right here because you can see that water moving. Look, and I can coax this. I'm going to dry it in place. And the reason why I kind of dried it is because I really want to move. I want to move to this slice and I don't necessarily want my colors to mix. Normally I would come in and I would just like washy the whole thing, but I'm just kind of playing a little bit here. So I want to play a little bit more. All right, I'm going to go, oh, let me get my brush wet. And I'm going to paint in some water here. Okay, this lesson today, there's a lot of super nerding out happens. So I hope that everybody is okay with that because there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that go through my head when I'm painting a stamped image or I'm painting a painting um, and I'm just kind of talking you through it live as it's happening. So I'm painting 
wet into wet, that slice right there. And the cool thing about doing this with your stamps is that your stamp, your illustrator has already worked out the concept for you. Look at that. Let that go. Look at it go. Love, love, love. And see how, because this is not wet over here, that color is not bleeding over there. If this was wet, it would bleed over. But I'm trying to get some definition between these slices, so I'm going to dry each slice in between. The slices of McGordy. Okay, I'm going to just drop that in. I'm going to drop a little more color at the top here. This time I'm going to switch over to my Joyce's Mother Green and just drop a little bit of that darker green up top and let that mix with my Cascade Green. I'm going to come in again with that Cascade Green. Oh, that's really wet. Drop a little bit more. You can see how it bled over a little bit because I had some water over there. That's okay. I'm just going to pull that away. Let that kind of do its thing. Come from the bottom here with green gold. So you can see that what I'm doing here isn't... Got a little bit of water over here. What I'm doing here isn't like what you would traditionally think of when you think of painting, right? When you think of painting, it's a back and forth with the brush strokes. But with watercolor, I like to kind of tap, tap, tap things in and experiment with how the colors are becoming friends on the paper. Now, I had a little bit of water over here. So what I've got is a little, what they call blooming. Do you see how the, um, the pigment has got kind of a line there, almost like a vein? What's happening is the water is pushing the pigment back and you get this kind of blooming effect that I absolutely love, love it. All right, I'm gonna dry, maybe not. I'm gonna leave these things wet and just see what happens. And then we're gonna dry in between. We're gonna totally dry in between. Okay. I'm using my brush and I am just painting water into this next slice. And I'm not being like super careful. If some water kind of goes over here and goes over there, that's okay, I'll be fine. But I am, and you can see that I touched it a little bit. That's okay. We're going to let some of that color bloom on over. And become friends with the little slice next to it. Take a little bit of that Cascade Green, drop it in the top, let it do its thing. And I'm not too worried about like some of these colors blending. Look at that blue that's happening right here from that Cas Cascade Green. The phthalo blue and that uh, brown iron oxide are spreading. Those pigments are spreading apart. Mmm, juicy. I'm going to drop a little bit of that cascade green right there. This Gordy is so pretty. These colors. This is one of the ways I like to paint. Even flowers is just kind of playing with them. Instead of me kind of directing the brush stroke and where I want it to go, I like to drop in color and see what it does. And I'm loving these colors here. Now, in some of the areas that are wet, I'm gonna come in with a, just a little smidge of the sea glass and just drop some more blue in there because we're getting the greens. See how when I added a little bit of water started to move oh my gosh I love that I'm cleaning off my brush kind of taking off some of the wetness in the brush that blue has spidered over a little bit I'm gonna take I've got a clean brush and I'm just gonna run it along that edge and just kind of suck that up like a little mop okay forgot to mention in the beginning if you have any questions along the way just drop them in the chat also, um, I mentioned this last week, but the, um, the Mary Everything stamp set that sold out, the holiday stamp set had, that I released that sold out um, with Gina K is back. 
Um, so yeah, that's happening. All right, I'm gonna grab a little bit of this yellow because something is telling me to drop a little bit of yellow right here. So I'm doing all this wet into wet and it looks super, super vibrant, right? The colors are mixing and mashing together. They look super, super vibrant. Now I'm gonna come in with the heat tool so my sound is going to, what happens with my microphone is that it, I don't, try not to talk with the heat tool because the microphone anticipates the sound and it just kind of um, modulates back a little bit. So let's take the heat tool. Let's just dry. Now, I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of wet wells of color here and watch what I'm going to do. I'm just pushing it a little bit and it's only going to go, see how it stops? It's because there's no more water. See how it stops? It'll only go and I can only push it where the water is. So I'm getting these really funky blooms happening and I love it. I think it adds to the texture and dimension. And then I'm going to dry them, straight up dry them right in place. Oh my goodness. Now, we've got a lot of blooms happening. I can't believe my, uh, I can't believe I haven't moved my paper. Okay, a lot of blooms happening. And if you are going, I'm going to pop to the front camera. If you, with your watercolor, stamping compositions, if you're watercoloring, anything. If blooming is something you don't like and you're looking for a more smoothie effect, this is not the technique you would do. You would definitely, you could go back in and recover from some of these blooms, but I think blooms are absolutely beautiful. They're, they're what makes watercolor just so interesting, the way these have blended together. But I am going to just come in with a little bit of water and I could tell you like this one right here, like you could go in and you could work this a little bit and you could blend this out even more if you don't like that hard line. So that is something that you might, if you don't like these hard lines, you can kind of just scrub them out and blend them together a little bit, which, you know, is beautiful too. Beautiful too. Okay, so I've got a couple questions here. Donna, question, how do you know? <laughs> Donna, I'm sorry to laugh, but that's a really great question. How do you know when to stop? Like, when do you know when to stop? Okay, first, I'm going to just spread out this bloom a little bit. I'm going to let that bloom. I kind of spread that one out a little bit. Okay, knowing when to stop. There isn't really like a hard and fast rule. With some paintings, they are knowing when to stop. I know that usually two to three layers of watercolor, bringing up that luminosity in three layers is when my brain kicks in to stop, okay? But sometimes with watercolors like Daniel, we're, we're using some professional watercolors, Daniel Smith, um, uh, da Vinci, some of the different brands that I've shared on this on this channel, they have a lot more pigment in them. So you don't, and they have like right out of the gate, you get a lot of payout with your color. So you are only working in two or three layers. If you're working with a brand that might be like a Cot Winsor Newton Cotman or uh, a brand that is a little more chalky in nature, you're going to need to do a couple more layers. But knowing when to stop is kind of those things that even I sometimes don't know when to stop. And I'll pull a painting in to show you an example of me not knowing when to stop on a composition and things just became less transparent, like they are here, like everything is really transparent and they became more opaque. Okay, so this is dry. I've got all of these funky colors happening. We're going to go in with a second layer here 
But our first layer was our washi washi layer. It was wet into wet. Our second layer is going to be more wet into dry. The brush is going to be wet. The paper is dry. I've got my first layer of color on. Now we're going to add another layer of color and we're going to start to bring up that luminosity. But I want to preserve that transparency that I've got going. So Donna, I hope that answered your question. Oh, and it looks like Kathy and Dawn are having a little chat in the about the inks. Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to come in. My brush is wet. My paper is dry. I'm going to come in over here. I'm going to pick up some cascade green on the tip of my brush. Okay. So my brush is not super, super wet. And I've got about like a 2% milk. See how it's, it's got a little, it's a little bit water, but it's not intense. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that cascade green. I'm just kind of going down the edge here. Just a little bit. Clean my brush. And now I'm just going to add, just kind of tap, tap, tap. And this is called glazing. So this is our second layer. See how I'm just tapping the edge of where I applied that color? And then I'm going to leave it. Now, Great, Donna. I'm so glad. Now, past me many, many times, we keep like scrubbing at this. But see how I just added that in and then I'm just going to leave it. Now, if you don't feel comfortable, because we are working in a stamped image and we tend to get into tighter spaces, you can go to a smaller brush. You can absolutely go to a smaller brush. But I'm going to use this number six. I'm going to come in with a little bit of this Ozzo green. It's Da Vinci Green Gold. I just called it Azo Green because that's that's a common name for it. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that green gold to the bottom here in like 100%, 100% milk. So full strength. Clean my brush. My brush was wet. The paper was dry. Clean my brush. And I'm just tapping the edges. Tapping the edges just to kind of smooth it out just a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of that Da Vinci um, Cascade Green. So, if drop in the chat if you've ever used Daniel Smith watercolors. It's very common. A lot of paper crafters love them, use them. A lot of professional painters love them, use them. I do love them. They're made here in the USA. So is Da Vinci. You can see I'm just tap, tap, tapping. And I'm resisting the urge to go back and forth with my brush. I'm just tapping a little bit of water and letting, just letting my pigment sit there. So I've got that layer and we're starting to get darker. But we're building up that luminosity. You can see how this is a lot lighter over here, but this is starting to build up the layer. Now, Daniel Smith. So pop in the chat if you've ever used Daniel Smith. And if you haven't, I wouldn't, and you love the greens and blues, I would encourage you literally to just try out Cascade Green because it is like a go-to favorite of mine. Um, in my, if you're in my um, classroom, and many of you are because I recognize names, if you go over to, if you're in my classroom in the community at crafterjoy.com, and you've signed up for the art exploration class from 2020. That was my free class. There was tw there's 12 lessons in there. There was a new color every month. I did a whole series on cascade green in that class. And I painted this, the Luna Moth. Um, so I've been obsessed with this color for quite some time. All right, I'm going to come in. And we're going to add another little layer. I'm going to add a little bit of... Joyce's Mother Green, a little bit of Cascade Green, a little bit of Sea Glass. I'm going to play with this. So here's my Joyce's Mother Green. And my brush is wet. I've got a lot of pigment here. Interesting. A lot of people are popping into the chat that they've never used Daniel Smith watercolors. Very cool. Love hearing that. So you're getting some good information for the first time. A little bit of Sea Glass. You can see I'm just dropping these colors in like at full strength. Working pretty quickly though. Clean off my brush. 
And then we're just going to start tap, tap, tapping them a little bit. Not a ton of water on my brush. Trying to keep that brush kind of dry, not super washy, but just tapping it out a little bit. Donna, okay. Donna says, her question, is the second technique more for precision based on watercoloring? So this part that I'm doing right now, yes, is more for adding in our lights and dark. So this is our glazing or our layering technique. And you can see I'm pretty heavy handed with adding that color in and then just tapping it out with my brush going back and forth with water and pigment and just using what's here to get some of that color on there. I'm going to add a little bit of that Azo Green right here. We're going to go in and do another definition layer, but what this is doing is it's starting to add more luminosity. Add a little bit because watercolor will fade back quite a bit. Um, when it's dry between the layers. So yes, Donna, the wet into dry technique. So the wet into dry is more precision. When we have our washy, washy first layer that we did, you notice that the watercolor just went where the water is, right? It just goes where the water is. And we're adding in that first washy layer. When we do wet into dry, we've got dry paper, wet brush, wet and pigment on here. It ends up um, being more precise because we are placing where we want that color to go and we are being a little more intentional about it and we're adding those layers in. I've got a little bloom happening right here. Oh my gosh. I am so loving this Gordy. Little Gordy. Ah, Rhonda says she's... Ah, good. Donna, I'm glad I answered the question. So... Wow, so that's so cool. You're just starting to build your watercolor paints. So if you're just starting to build your watercolor stash, you're, you're at the right channel, friends. <clears throat> I talk about lots of different watercolor brands. Um, I also have, all right, we're going to go to our next slice and talk a little bit about watercolor wonderland. I saw Cherie is here. Cherie is one of the students in my Watercolor Wonderland class. That is my biggest class in the Craft Your Joy classroom at craftyourjoy.com. My biggest all-encompassing watercolor class. It also tends to be the one that, of my classes that's a little more pricier. But I am going to put it on sale soon for um, like Black Friday <laughs> or pre-Black Friday or something. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you get on my email list or just keep an eye out. Um, and I'll talk about it in some future videos. So um, if that's a class that you might be interested in, but I walk through a lot of stuff in, in the watercolor wonderland class. It is the most comprehensive approach to everything that I've taught in little tiny bits on this YouTube channel. It's like an all inclusive. Oh, thank you, Cherie. She said it was the best class. It is a big one. Um, it took me months to produce. Okay, we're moving into this slice, and we're going to start at the top here. So we've got, it's a little bit wet, and we've lost our definition between these two slices, but we're going to come back and get it. We're going to bring it back, so don't worry. I'm going to start up here, and I've got like, I know many of you on the channel have heard me say this. I've got like a 2% milk. You can see that there's a lot of pigment, not a lot of water, not super washy. And I'm just adding that color. This is, this is definitely a more precise way to place some of this color in. Kind of went over a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of that blue. And then I'm going to add a little bit of my Azo, of my um, green gold. Down here, I'm adding a layer of green gold. See how I'm just kind of dropping it in at like a 2% milk. It's a lot of color. Now we're going to clean off the brush and kind of make sure it's not sopping wet. And how I do that is I've got a little paper towel over here. 
and I kind of just run the bottom here and just kind of tap off some of the excess. So Donna, if you're interested, keep an eye out. I am going to, like that class is one of my more expensive classes because, um, you know, it's pretty hefty. But take a peek at it at crafterjoy.com. There's an introductory video that talks all about all of the different things that you'll learn in that class. There's lots of videos, lots of handouts, lots of things. And see if that might be something for you. But I am going to put that on a big discount soon. All right, I'm just tapping this out. I'm just kind of blending those colors over to the side here. Just tapping it out. Tap, 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 tapping the edges. And I am working relatively quickly, even though I was chitty chatting. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, kind of pop that yellow, mix that yellow in with that sea glass, and I get another green. That's super pretty. Loving it. Okay. That might be my favorite slice. <laughs> that sounded like, that might be my favorite slice, like a piece of pizza pie. Loving that. Yeah, keep an eye out for that class because it is one of my more expensive classes, but I want to make it super affordable. And um, again, it's a super, super fun one. But if you, you know, I do teach a lot of watercolor techniques on this channel. So you always have this channel as well. All right, I'm going to go in with my last one. And then you can start to see how our Gordy, the layers of color have really popped up. So we've done that in two layers so far two layers so far. Um, I'm going to come over here and add a little bit. My brush is wet. My paper is dry. I'm going to add a little bit of Cascade Green right here around my edge here. And we've got a question from Beth. Hi Beth. When you watercolor, do you take the light source into consideration? Oh Beth, that's such a great question. Okay, and I'm going to answer it because I am going to um, when I am, that's a great question. When I am watercoloring like a commission piece and like it's from a photo or um, there's def a definite light source, I'm just taking my brush here and just tapping out that edge and just kind of using the pigment that's here and coming over. I do. When I'm doing something that's a little bit more realistic, when I am doing my stamped images, I don't. What I like to do is what we're doing here today. It's just letting the water color, the different colors kind of blend and bleed together to kind of give us that composition that you're looking for. So to pop to the front camera about light source. So with our stamped images, I, I was also a Copic marker teacher. I've used Copic markers for decades, like even before they became huge marker tools in our paper crafting industry. One of the classes I taught was coloring with your Copic markers and taking into consideration your light source, like if the sun's coming from this direction or this direction, or if it's illuminating from up underneath, and then what your stamped image would look like. With watercolor, I tend to not think that way um, unless I'm trying to paint something a little bit more realistic. These kind of paintings tend to be more um, I want them to have that watercolor effect, that washy look, and be a little bit more on the whimsical side. So I hope that answers your question. I'd love to know, um, do you, Beth, when you're doing your um, stamped images, take into consideration your, um, your light source? I feel like if I did, then if I did with this painting, this is what would happen. If my sun is coming from this direction, my darkest colors, my darkest hues are going to be on this side and everything would be in shadow over on this side if it came in from here. So my lightest area would be up here. But because I kind of want this to be greens and yellows and whimsical, I'm just going with it. And I'm letting the colors blend and mish and mash together. So I hope that, I hope that helps. I kind of nerded out on that question. I'm taking a little bit of yellow here. And you see how I'm just going to drop a little bit of yellow into some of the areas that are just a little bit wet. Clean off my brush. Tap, tap, tap this out. 
And that yellow is not something, is something that I do often. I call it a finishing technique. I think we're only gonna do two layers here. I'm gonna move on. We're gonna let this air dry. While I work on the ground and the sky, um, but before, before I do that, I need to do the stem. Now, I've got a stamp for our stem. So let's pop that in. Friends, we are going to go over an hour today. But that's because we're kind of doing this little bit of an intense um, watercolor lesson today. So I'm going to take my medium spruce and I'm going to stamp it down. Stamp down the stem. I am loving the way this Gordy looks. Loving it. I almost want to add a little bit of gold metallic to it, but my brain is starting to go like, oh, what else can we add? Oh, what else can we add? Um, so I'm resisting the urge to think that. All right, I've pulled out one of my travel sets because I didn't bring in some browns. We were focusing on our greens and yellows, so I'm going to pull in a little bit of burnt sienna. Um, people are liking the whimsical. I'm going to pull in a little bit of this burnt sienna from Da Vinci into my little and I think I'm going to go with a smaller brush friends I'm going to go with a smaller brush so I'm taking the color that's here I stamped that out with the light spruce let's just kind of blend that I'm getting my area wet here oh I have a little bit of red on that brush and I haven't forgotten, I am going to come back to talking about overworking while I'm letting this dry. I'm going to come in with a little bit of that burnt sienna. And just kind of drop that in right here. I kind of let that do its thing. Then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the sky and the ground. Ooh, I just added a little bit right there to get a little definition. That's the nice thing about this... Um, these brushes that are a little more like they're smaller and have sharper edges like sh sharper tips and add a little bit of that burnt sienna just kind of let that do its thing let that settle in <laughs> Donna said I think we're all just enjoying the process good sometimes friends I don't want to complete a card but I want to use our stamps to focus on watercolor techniques and complete a project with you together. Uh, Kathy said, did you have to mention gold metallic? It's my weakness. It kind of is my weakness too. All right, I'm loving Gordy. Gordy's looking amazing. Now, we're going to come in and I'm going to start thinking about my sky and my ground because we're going to do some over stamping too and add some pattern background in. That just popped into my head. Okay. I'm going to go back to, a, I'm going to go to a bigger brush now. i got a number 10. And I'm going to just kind of come across my bottom here. And you can see that that Ozzo, that green gold, was still a little bit wet. So I'm using the pigment that's there and just kind of blending it out a little bit. I'm going to go off the edges a little bit. I'm going to come in. I'm going to bring that burnt sienna back out. Let's take a peek. So this is just, the brush was wet, the paper was dry. Take a little bit of that burnt sienna and drop it in. Now it looks a little bit like a hot mess. That's okay. I'm just going to blend it out. Get a little bit darker where Gordy, where the little gourd meets the ground. Get a little darker. Love this. Come off the edge a little bit. I'm going to grab a little bit of that green gold. Just kind of dropping in a bunch of different fall light ground colors. You know, grass hasn't really started to die off yet. Maybe yours has. If you're in the Midwest, things are, you guys have already gotten a little bit of snow. Now, Yesterday, I'm in Maryland. I think everybody knows that. I don't like the intensity of what I've got going here, so I'm going to come in and just tap some of that color out with the tip of a paper towel. I also get a little bit of texture. 
And then know that if it feels like a little bit too much, I'm not worried about that line because it's not going to show up once I put the mat in. If it feels like a little bit too much, remember when the watercolor is going to fade back once it dries. All right, now we're going to come in, and this is where our sea glass is going to shine. If you're using, if you're doing something like this and you don't have watercolors, remember, you can smoosh down, and I know you ladies were in the chat talking about this, smoosh down your ink pads and you're going to be able to get um, that watercolor ink. Donna says she's in Virginia. Oh, good. I forgot what I was saying. Um, so I'm in Maryland and yesterday morning I was getting ready to, it was early, maybe like seven-ish. I was getting ready to go for a walk outside, like do some my workout and it started to snow, but I had my glasses on. This is hilarious. I'm going to pop my face. I didn't have my glasses on, so I'm like looking out the window and I'm kind of squinting instead of like, you know, putting them on. Um, and I said, oh, it looks like a heavy duty rain happening. And then I opened the back door and I was like, oh, it's snowing. It was snowing. And I was like, oh, November 1st, it's snowing. And it was so pretty. Of course, it didn't last long and it didn't stick, but that's okay. All right. I'm going to come in. And I'm just going to start adding some water for my sky. And I'm painting water in. And I'm doing this washy. This is going to be a washy technique. So wet into wet. And I'm just painting in clear water. Or tinged, green tinged water. Let's come in here and just kind of paint that in. Loving it. Okay. Now, same brush, picking up some of that sea glass, and I'm just going to start dropping this in. Now, Da Vinci doesn't <clears throat> swoosh as much. That sea glass color doesn't swoosh as much as you saw with that Cascade Green. So, every watercolor brand is a little bit different in what, in how it disperses, how the pigment in the watercolor in the paint disperses with water. Da Vinci usually stays where you put it and you kind of have to coax it around. See, so you have spiders a little bit, but I'm just coaxing it around just a little bit more and getting it to go in the water. Now that Daniel Smith Cascade Green, you saw how that just whooshed and followed the line right around the slice. Oh, I'm loving this. And I'm working kind of fast. Ah, <laughs> Don said the best kind of so the kind that doesn't stick. I actually love all the seasons. My favorite season is summer though. But then I say that I say that now, but then when fall comes, I'm like, oh, this is my favorite season. It's sort of like with my cards and my um my stamp releases every month. And I know that you all hear me say this all the time on those videos. Oh, this might be my favorite. Oh, this might be my favorite. It's because my favorite changes. All right, I'm just kind of getting that color to come around. Um, Donna had shared that that ground, that just kind of gave this our, our dimension here, right? So we have our foreground, we have our Gordy, and now we have our, our background here. Oh, I'm loving this. Okay, now, Beth said, oh, thanks, Beth. I try to consider the light source, but I'm not always successful. Um, me either. <laughs> I try to consider it sometimes, but remember with our paper crafting projects, we're usually having fun, right? But if we want to, like, I'll try to, I'm just dropping my towel in here just to pull some of that color away. It also kind of gives me that faux cloud look. And then I'm going to dry this. When I'm thinking about light source, um, sometimes it just consciously comes out, like in my painting. But if I'm really intensely thinking about it, like with a commission piece or something where I really want it to be super realistic, I will I will take the time to consider it. All right, I'm going to take my heat tool. I'm going to zap all this because I want all of this to be dry as I move to the finishing layers.
<laughs> That's funny, Wendy. <laughs> she says, I know to call it whimsical. Exactly. We call it whimsical when you don't have a light source. I'm loving the blue. I just kind of boogered that blue up right there by touching it while it was still wet. So I'm going to just add a little bit of water and just kind of blend that out. Blend out my faux pas. Okay. Paper towel is a great way to pull away some of that pigment. You also get that uh, texture and dimension there. Digging that. Okay, so we did two layers on our pumpkin, our little gourdy. We did one layer in our cloud background. And the reason why I'm not going to go in for another layer is because I'm going to do a little bit of over stamping of a pattern from the stamp set in the background here. We've got this layer going here. I'm going to add a little bit more, I don't know why I closed that, I'm going to add a little bit more burnt sienna to this bottom. Just kind of add a little bit more. So I've got a little bit more of that color. Close that up. <laughs> Wendy, I was so busy watching this tutorial that I'm now only having breakfast. Oh, good. That means you enjoy. You're enjoying your time. Just gonna kind of just take my brush and just get like some little scratchy lines going here. I'm just using the pigment that's here. Just kind of blending it out. I'm gonna let that ride. Now, before I start to do anything in the background, we're gonna go in with some detailed finishing layers. And I'm gonna bring back the slices. You could, if you wanted to, go back over the whole thing with your stamp. We're not going to do that. You could, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to come in with a little bit of the Cascade Green. And I've hedged back and forth about which color I wanted to use. The Joyce's Mother Green, let's bring that in. The Darker Green or the Cascade Green. And I think I want to use this for my details. So let's see, I've got a smaller brush, I've got a number two, I'm coming in and grabbing, this brush does hold a lot of water, I'm grabbing like a, a nice amount of that pigment, not a lot of water, probably close, in between 2% and whole milk, so a lot of that pigment on my brush. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to come in and I'm just going to follow my lines. And I'm going to bring back that line as thin as possible. I'll come around the bottom, but you can see I'm just, I'm really choked up on the um, brush. I'm a left-hander, as you know. I'm really choked up on this beyond the barrel right up here on the brush. And I'm just kind of, I've got the brush positioned in more of a, a, um, vertical and I'm coming and I'm using the tip and I'm just adding my lines back in so this I'm gonna see how I feel about this when we're done because I might blend them out a little bit I might not like how harsh they are uh, Dawn just said I feel like I would have to move the paper around to get the lines right. You know what, Dawn? I always move the paper around. So I taped it down today because I was like, hmm, can I do that? Can I tape it down and be successful? Let me try. Normally I've got to move it around, so I'm just giving it a go. I'm coming around the bottom here, and all I'm doing here is just adding some of those dimension lines back in. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, I don't know that I love it, but that's okay. I'm going to keep going. Um, I did a tutorial a couple weeks, maybe it was a couple weeks ago, with the, um, the Zen Art Fine Line Brushes. They would work great with this, too. Okay, I don't dislike it, but I feel it's a little harsh, and it's taking away from the whimsy. So I'm going to go back with that same brush and just kind of run a wet brush over just the edges of it just soften it a little just soften it 
but I do like this detailed graphic style in my paintings and I'm going to show you I didn't forget um, to, as the follow-up to the answer of knowing when to stop it takes practice but my guts telling me I didn't like how harsh the line was so I'm, I'm just softening it a little bit just a little bit especially these bottom ones I'm just softening the edges a little bit clean brush Okay, coming in right here. And that to me is a little more pleasing to the eye. Right here feels a little bit harsh. So I'm just gonna just hit it a little bit with a clean brush, just soften it. And now I'm feeling okay. Now I'm feeling okay with it. I'm gonna come in with a little bit, just a little something. A burnt sienna. Oh my goodness, I keep closing this. A little something of the burnt sienna on the tip of this brush. Just kind of get a little definition wrapped around. A little gordy here. A little bit of definition. Another layer. I only did one layer of that burnt sienna. So let's just adding a little bit more using the pigment that's here and drawing it across the edge. Just giving this a little extra, a little extra something. Okay, I'm gonna let all this dry. Loving it. Now, we're gonna come in for our last kind of finishing detail. And I also, before we do that, let me pull this painting in. I want to show you, the question was asked about knowing when to stop. So I want to pull something in that I recently painted, talking about knowing when to stop. Okay, so this is my typical style where we add layers and layers, washy-washy layers, and then do a lot of graphic details over top. Very similar to what we're doing with our stamped image here. This little flower got this this started to get away from me and I stopped but this flower in some of the areas where I lost my transparency because I didn't stop um, I kind of kept going and added another layer and another layer and another layer um, versus my three so I know with my the way I paint and how heavy-handed I can be three is usually the max in order to preserve our transparency and color you can see that this flower has a lot more transparency this one definitely has a lot of transparency, but this one was starting to become more opaque. So I hope that helped. I hope that helped. Um, you know, it's it's starting to understand how you work as a as a paper crafter and painter, and starting to learn. You know, my, I'm pretty heavy handed, so I understand that usually three layers is my max. All right, now in the stamp, we've got this really cool I call it the star pattern this pattern I'm just gonna I am just gonna give you a sneaky peeky and I'm gonna tell you this pattern this isn't the end for it's this isn't the only place it's gonna show up it's gonna show up in some future stamps because I'm obsessed with the pattern I love it and I want it to um, I wanted to use it again okay all right great Donna I'm glad that was helpful all right now I'm going to come in and stamp into the background here, but I didn't grab my stamp ink. So let me grab it. Now I'm going to come in and stamp a little bit of that pattern right over here and it's going to kind of go off the design. So my design, let's put this little mat over top so you can kind of see. The design of the Funky Gordy, he's kind of down here in our lower, he's hanging out in our lower third over here, and I've got a little bit of wide open space over here. So I want to add a little extra texture and dimension to that area. I am using Tranquil Teal. If I wanted to this to be a little more subtle, I'd come in with Gina K. Sea Glass. But I want to, I want this to be an in-between kind of thing, a full-on painting and a paper crafting project. So 
I'm going to turn my star shape. No, nope, I'm going to keep it horizontally. And I'm going to kind of start off at the top, off the edge. Just stamp down once. Let the pattern be what it is. Ink this up again. Move my pattern over, but kind of lining it up here. Move my pattern over. Stamp right there. So I've created that pattern coming across that edge in that tranquil teal. And it adds a little extra something up there. Watch when we put that on. Oh, I kind of love that. I kind of love the way that looks. It's... Do I want to go down a little bit further? I do. I want to do it in threes. I'm going to come off the edge even more. We're doing this on the fly, friends. We're doing this on the fly. A little bit right here, lining up with that star right there. And I'm coming in, just got that texture happening, got that pattern happening. This pattern and this look is kind of giving this a little bit, I'm getting a little bit of a retro feel. And I love how it's just sticking out there, just a smidge. All right, let's move that. I'm going to pull this off. I think we're done. This is knowing when we're done. I know we're done. I like the way this looks. I like that we've got some texture and dimension here. I'm resisting the urge to add splatter. I'm not going to do it. We're going to leave it be. We're just going to pull all this off. What a fun painting. You can pop this whole thing into like a five by seven. I thought about doing a sentiment. We could pop a sentiment in there, but we're going to leave it be. I might go back in later and add a little gold metallic because, you know, that would be me. I might do it. A little gold metallic. But let's take... <gasps> There's one more thing I want to do. I just saw it. Just saw it. Maybe... No, we're leaving it. I was going to add some of the curly cues in the stamp set. Just kind of go out that way and this way. But I... It would dial up the whimsy quite a bit, but I'm going to leave it be. And just leave. <laughs> Wendy said the splatter urge is strong. I'm not going to lie. The splatter urge for me to add white splatter, like white PH Martin splatter, is super strong right now. But I'm going to resist the urge. And I love the way this looks. Okay. So, I hope... I hope you got a lot out of this tutorial. We we did hone in and focus quite a bit on different brands, different greens. I kind of walked you through and talked you through wet into wet techniques, wet into dry techniques. And we used the Grace and Gratitude stamp, stamp set as our framework for building our painting. And friends, this is like the number one reason why I love being a stamp illustrator for Gina K is not only because of the paper crafting projects that we can make, but also creating the stamp collection and these stamps so that you can use them and create other things with them. You can create your own paintings, use them in your compositions to create your own paintings. Um, and try out different techniques. So this was super, super fun. I totally mashed up two different things that I do on this channel. Paper crafting projects, stamping, and watercolor. And just kind of mashed them up to do this composition today. So super fun. I'm loving it. I think I'm going to, I might pop this in a frame and just kind of put it out for the Thanksgiving season. Okay, friends. Thanks so much for joining me today. I am so so grateful that you took the time out. I went over our hour in a big way. Um, and usually with these watercolor, these more intense watercolor tutorials, we're going to go over because there's a lot to share and there's a lot going on up here that I want to share with you. So I'll be back next week. And um, we're not going to start the holiday series next week. I feel like it's still a little bit too early, but I'll be back next week with something fun. I would encourage you to get on to my email list because I'm going to be sharing lots of things throughout this holiday season and more, including that huge honking discount for Watercolor Wonderland at CraftYourJoy.com. I see everybody kind of popping in and saying thank you.
Thank you. And everybody's saying such beautiful things. Thank you so much. Um, I'm just grateful to be here with you today. So I'm sending you into the weekend to craft your joy. Um, take a look at everything that's listed down below. I would love to have you in my free community at crafterjoy.com. Many of you are already in that community. I'll be posting this over there in the community along with scans of the colors and the pigments that we use today. It'll be over in the freebies in the crafterjoy.com community at crafterjoy.com. Okay, friends. Thanks so much. If you have any questions or you're watching this on the replay, feel free to pop them in the chat. It's me that'll be popping in to answer them. Have a great weekend and thank you so much for joining me today. Bye now, friends. I'll see you soon.